Hey, geometries, this is lesson 1-8, perimeter, circumference, and area. Our objectives today, let's get ourselves a little pointer up here. Our objective today, to find the perimeter or circumference of basic shapes and to find the area of basic shapes. Perimeter and circumference of basic shapes and to find the area. Now folks, we've been doing this for a while. So if you've got questions or any kind of follow-ups or any kind of conundrums that you need answered, <clears throat> make sure you seek out one of the geometry peeps. Now, we're looking at the perimeter P of a polygon is the sum of the lengths of its sides. So we're just adding up the lengths of the sides if we're looking for a perimeter. The area A of a polygon is the number of square units it encloses. So it's coverage. So let's do one thing at a time for these basic shapes. For um, a square. Now a square, this is side length S. This is its side length, okay? Now, I kind of like to stay away from using S's for a variable because they all look like fives. My example right there, and I have a five. Wow, they are close, but we're gonna do our best with making sure we recognize the S here. So as we're going through here, we have perimeter, the distance around. If I start here and walk around, this is my perimeter for S. If I wanna cover it and I have S in here, Remember, that's how many squares, okay, it, whatever size, S times S, and remember, I would have an S here, and it'd be S times S is X squared for my area of my square. Now, let's go down and talk about rectangles. Rectangles are real similar, okay, but remember, we got a base and a height. So when we're talking about that perimeter, and we talked about that perimeter, we had base and ice, I had L and W, that funny L, when we were doing our algebra review. But if we distribute that to both those, we could go 2B and 2H. Or if we're really thinking about this, which is really cool, we could go just B plus H times two. And I like that one because all I have to do is add the base length, the height, and then multiply that by two for my perimeter. Now in area, just I'm multiplying, multiplying the base and height together to get area. So keep that going in your head and let it stew for a while. Triangle. Now, when we do a triangle, you've got to have some information with it with perimeter. Okay, so let's bring those up. Perimeter <clears throat> is the length of A, the length of C, the length of B. Now, keep in mind, just because I give you a value doesn't necessarily mean you have to use it for perimeter because I have that H in there. And that H is the height from the base we're going to use to the top of your triangle. Now, keeping in mind, it's one half base times height. Now, keeping in mind that if I clone this triangle, this, uh, this green one, and I flipped it around, and I, I just kind of like doing this because I'm flipping things around. If I do this, this is all of a sudden a parallelogram. And what's what's the purpose of that? You guys have done parallelograms, and the area of a parallelogram is a lot like the area of a rectangle. It's base times height. But a triangle is just half of that parallelogram. That's why we take half of it. So you've got to keep that in mind when we're working with area. But perimeter, just straight up, you just add the sides up and you're all good. Circles is something you've worked with before. We've got a circle coming on here, radius R and diameter D. The radius is the distance from the center of the circle, so that's this distance right here. The diameter is two radiuses. Diameter is equal to two radiuses because it goes all the way across through the center of a circle. It's also um, something to keep in mind as I'm working with this. Circumference is pi times D okay, where it's pi times diameter, or its circumference is 2 pi r, and that's directly related to that diameter. Diameter is 2 r, and then we just plug that in and evaluate. Area is pi r squared, okay, that's the area of a circle. Here's the danger zone. This is dangerous, okay, dangerous, and why is it dangerous? These have the same values. They have pi's, they have r's, and there's a two. But in area, 
the two is squaring the r, and circumference, the two here, is on the same line, so we treat them differently. So you have to make sure you know the difference of those two formulas and what they do. Remember, circumference is a fancy way of saying perimeter, and area is just our coverage. Now, finding the perimeter of a rectangle. <clears throat> the Botany Club is planning to place edging on the outside of the path in the garden. How much edging material will they need? Now, I want you to consider this. The original garden is 22, okay, by 16. Now, the Botany Club is planning to place edging on the outside of the path in the garden, and this path is four feet big, okay? Now, how does that path, if I'm putting my edging, and let's talk about my edging in red. My edging is going to go around this. I'm going to try to keep her, you can think about it as a fence or whatever, you know, because otherwise the deer are going to eat everything in my garden, unless I'm just making it for them for eating. Um, but keep in mind, how is that four going to affect the length of my fence in comparison to the garden size? Okay, if that four is on both sides of the, of the length and on both sides of the width, it should increase my garden size. So I should be looking at a dimension of four plus 22 plus four, which is 30 for my length, and four plus 16 plus four, which is 24 feet for my width here. So now they're asking me, what's the edging length? And that's me perimeter. Perimeter is equal to 2L. Excuse me. We're going to go base, base and height because that's what you were told. Okay. Now, I've got 24 plus 30, which is 54. So I got 2 times 54, which is 108 feet. So we will need 108 feet of edging. The Botany Club is planning to place edging, uh, of edging. Now, I've got some folks looking at me going, bloom, or I should say scaring at the screens, going, bloom, why in the world are you writing that out? I've got a word problem. I get a word answer. I must explain what I'm doing. And part of that is me understanding the problem completely. Okay? So we've got our botany edging problem done. Now, a circle. A circle can be named with a circle, a little picture of a circle with a dot in it. A circle with the center labeled as A would be written as this. And this is exactly how I'd name it, circle A. Okay. Now, circle formulas use the number pi or, uh, you know, use the number pi, okay, or pi. And pi is an irrational number, okay. It does not have a terminating decimal. You can't make it a fraction. We approximate it with a fraction, but we can't make it with a fraction. And it is something that's naturally occurring, and it's the circumference divided by the diameter. That's how you get pi, okay? It's a ratio. But we approximate pi with the following numbers, 3.14 and 22 sevenths. And you see this all the time. And I want to emphasize, these are not exact. Okay? So for exact answers, we will leave it in terms of pi. Okay? Or we'll leave top pi in our answers. But I want to, like, give you a little hint for multiple choice tests. Unless you are told otherwise in the directions of the problems, Always use the pi key in your calculator for computations, okay? If they tell you, hey, use 3.14 for pi, then do that, because in a multiple choice test, if they don't tell you to use 3.14, you gotta use the pi key in order to um, select your correct answer, okay? That's just a hint from Bloom, okay? I'll talk to you on the next page. Now, problem two, finding circumference. What is the circumference of the circle in terms of pi? Now, remember, on that first play, page, you have circumference, okay, which is 2 pi r, or diameter times pi. You also have area is pi r squared. Now, you've got to know that when you're doing this, this is not the one I want. 
Okay, so when you're taking care of that, let's put that in red. This is not the one I want. So when we're taking care of this, we've got to select the correct formula. Just because you have one doesn't mean you have the right, you will get the right answer. What is the circumference of the circle to the nearest tenth? Now this is important. I rushed the last uh, notes and I forgot about the tenth, but so we'll talk about that. So I've got circumference. Circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Well, r is 4. 4 goes in. And by the way, pi is 3.14159, and it goes on forever. So now I'm going to take out my calculator after I pop this 4 into my calculation. And this is in terms of pi, 4 times 2. So I've got it in terms of pi, 4 pi centimeters. But they asked me to round to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to take my calculator, if I can dig it up here. It's back over here. And I'm going to take and go two times. Now, you got to find your pi key. What's really nice about the Texas Instrument calculators, um, it's they're all over the place. So you've got to find your own. Um, the pi keys are kind of a little bit everywhere. There's like a pi for the key, and it's a, it's a little blue key right up top, like it is here on my calculator. Okay, but you got to make sure you know where it is for your calculator. So I got 2 pi times 4, and I know that's 8 pi, and I enter. And by the way, I could have just entered 8 pi, and I had been fine, and it gives me the same answer. Now, that's 25.13. I'm supposed to round to the tenth. That's the tenth. The tenth's the first place. The hundredth is the next one, and the thousandth is the third one. The ten thousandth is the fourth one, and they sound like I'm lifting. Okay, but we are looking at our answer being in our calculator 25.1. Now it's 25.1 because I round there, and that's a three. If it were five, I'd go up and it'd say 25.2. But because it's a three, it's five, it's less than five. I'm gonna go 25.1 centimeters for my answer. So that's the answer you're looking for. That's gonna get you the big kahuna points. Okay, now let's look at this next problem. We're supposed to look, what is the circumference of the circle in terms of pi? Circumference, I'm gonna bring these formulas down, okay? Just to remind us, okay? So we don't have to look them up again. <clears throat> now, in this problem, I've got a circumference, but I'm given a diameter. I'm not gonna cut the diameter in half. You could, but why? I'm already given the diameter, so I'm gonna go 15 pi. Well, that's 15 pi inches, and that's my circumference. So I'm going to grab my calculator again, and I got 15 second pi, and hit enter. Okay, I'm going to take care of these. And I got 47.1. Again, my tenth is right there, and this is a 2, so it stays 47.1. So I'm looking at 47.1 inches. Okay, and that's my answer. Now I'm going to hit that little wavy because that means it's about. Okay, and we're going to go on to our next problem. Finding the area of each of the circles above in terms of pi. Now, ooh, the area of each of the circles above in terms of pi. Okay, so we got some work place here. And again, I have to decide which formula to use. Remember, on my front sheet, we had circumferences to pi r, which is the diameter times pi, and we have area is equal to pi r squared. And this is the one I want because it's area. So I'm going to pull out my area formula. Area is pi r squared. Well, once again, I got r. 4 squared. So this is 16 pi. Now, keep in mind, this is area. So it's now it's centimeters squared. And I've got to pop it in my calculator because I want it to the nearest tenth. So 16 second pi. And I've got my 50.26. Now, this is important. This is a 2, but it's, that's a 6. So now it's 50.3. And that's centimeters squared. All right, so that's what we've got going on. And I want you to try this next one, finding area. Turn me off, find your answer, turn it back on. Okay, so welcome back. So we're finding area. Area is pi r squared, and I've got 15. Now I have to cut this in half. So now this is pi at 7.5 quantity squared. Now. I got 7.5 quantity squared, 7.5 squared is 56.25, all right, and I'll prove that to you on my calculator, if I hit that squared, I have 56.25, I'm going to multiply that by pi as soon as I get rid of all these little marks on my calculator, and times my 
pi and hit enter. So that's 176.7 and I've got 176.7. Keep in mind I'm doing area so my units are squared and that's my answer for that problem. Now let's slide on to our next one. Problem three, finding perimeter in the coordinate plane. What is the perimeter of triangle EFG? Now it's really cool to do this perimeter of a triangle when this is a horizontal value. I can start here and go one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, look, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, look, eight. Now, I've got to find this. And we talked about the Pythagorean theorem and we talked about distance formula. I could totally use distance formula. Okay, let's find green and distance form, GE. GE using the distance formula. Remember, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. Now, I find my x's, I got 3 minus a negative 3. I got my y's, 6 minus a negative 2, okay? And I've got myself 6 squared plus 8 squared. And I'm looking at 100, which is, that's the square root of 100, which is just 10. Now, I want to stop for a second here and have you realize something. A squared plus B squared equals C squared is Pythagorean theorem. I have a grid. This is a grid. Okay. And I have measurements. I have measurements of 8 and a measurement of 6. 8 squared plus 6 squared is equal to C. If I take the square root of that, that is 10. Now, keep in mind, this is set up to take points in. So if I put points in there, points in there, points there, points there, I can find my answer. Well, if I already have the measurements of the legs, I can just use Pythagorean theorem. And people go, how do you know that? Because of this step right here, they are the same. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's a little shortcut, but I am not done with my problem. I'm asked to find the perimeter of my triangle. I now have all the necessary things for perimeter. I've got 10 plus 8 plus 6, which equals 24. Now, I don't have a specific units on this. They didn't tell me that each unit is some sort of centimeters, inches, miles, or whatever. So I'm going to say 24 units, okay, just to make sure I take care of that idea of units in my head. Okay, problem four, finding the area of a rectangle. Now, I want you to try this. You want to make a rectangular banner. The banner is two and a half feet wide and five feet high. To the nearest square yard. Now, this is this is this is this is something we'll talk about. To the nearest square yard, how much material do you need? Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. Let's just find it in square feet first. Let's find it in square feet first, make a sketch, and label it. Go. Okay, you've got that sketch. 2.5. Notice 0.5 is the same as a half. 5, and this is feet. Notice I'm putting little tick marks in there like that. That means feet. Now, if I'm going to look for the area of this, the area is going to be length times width, or base times height which is 2.5 times 5. Okay, I got 2.5 times 5. 2.5 times 5, and that is 12.5. Now, remember, that comes out to be 12.5 feet squared. Now, I want to caution you about this. How many feet are in a yard? Okay. And people are all like, well, Bloom, you know, there are three feet in a yard. I went, great. We are going to take this feet squared, and we're going to make it yard squared. But I know there are, um, in one yard, there are three feet. Now, we're doing stoichiometry. You've done this in science. But that will only take care of one of my feet. Notice I said feet. And then I've got to get my other one yard 
three feet. Now remember, these are um, conversion units I get to use. So I'm taking feet squared to yard squared, and my other feet is now gone. And my final answer is going to have yards. So now I've got to take my 12.5 in my calculator and divide that by 9, and that is going to be yards squared. So I'm going to take my 12.5 divided by 9, divided by 9, and I get 1.388888889. Now, we're looking at this, and I'm going to round this to the hundredth. I don't think they told us to round it anywhere else. Hey, let's see if we can do it in a fraction. Let's go math frac. We're going to save that as a frac. And I've got 25 eighteenths yards. So that's my choice. I got 25, 25 eighteenths, okay, yard squared, or 1 and, uh, which is the same as 1 and 7 eighteenths, or that is the same as, that is the same as 1.39 yards squared, okay? Now, keeping in mind, I just did a stoichiometry thing. You could have said at the beginning of this, all right, I'm going to do um, this here. And I got 2.5 thirds and 5 thirds. And now I'm taking it from feet to yards. And I can now do it in yards, my answer. So now I got 2.5 thirds times five thirds, which is going to be 12.5 ninths. Okay. Well, if I want to get rid of that decimal, this becomes 25 eighteenths. And that's where my yards comes from because this was in yards, that's in yards, and that's in yards at the start. So I could have put it in yards right away and had my final thing and it be in yards squared. So it's your choice. Okay, just you got to know what you're working with. If you've got questions, talk to myself or Mr. Monahan or Mrs. Scotia. Now, postulate 110. Area addition postulate. The area of a region is the sum of the areas of its non-overlapping parts, meaning that we're not going to double count space because, you know, we want to be careful about doing that. Finding the area of a new regular shape. So we're going to find the area of your new regular shape to the right. Now, when we do this, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. And I've got some people already figuring it out. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and do it right now. And then after you're done, make sure you turn me off. And after you're done, turn me back on and we'll talk about your solutions. Go ahead. All right. Welcome back. Now, there's multiple solutions on this, and I'm going to do maybe one or two of them. And as I do them, I want you to pay attention to what happens with my values of measurement. Now, I'm paying attention to these markings. They mean they're all congruent. So that means all of these are three. I'm just going to put A3 there because it's going to represent both of them. And this is also a nine because of these markings. Now, I could. After I've addressed that, I could break this down like this. And if this was 3, that would be 9. This is 3 by 3, that's 9. And that makes this 6 by 6, which is 36. So now I got a 36. So my area is going to be equal 9 plus 36 plus 9. Okay. And that's 18. That's, you know, 54. And that's 54 centimeters squared. That is one way of doing this problem. Now, I had some other folk kind of go, oh, I didn't think about it that way. I saw it this way. Boom. Okay, there's consistency in measurement. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, three by three, six, three by three, which is nine um, squares, which is also 54 centimeters squared. Now, I've got a couple people that are really getting fancy on me, and they're looking at it like, hey, Bloom, what if I did it this way? I have one, two, three, three by three squares, which is 27. So I can look at the area as a subtract. So I can go nine squared, which is the big square, and I could subtract off three 
times 9, which is 27. And guess what? I still get 54 centimeters squared. Now, I could be here all day with you all, but I just want to make sure you know that as long as we apply our rules correctly, there may be more ways than one to find a final answer, but you must show your work in a clear, concise manner. I hope things are going well for you. And as we go through this last part of the summary, use the lesson objectives in your notes to reflect on what we learned today. Remember, this is our last new section. So when you do this, you need to go back to your um, uh, checkoff sheet and double check the things that you haven't checked off and probably bring those up in class and go, hey, what about this? What about this? I don't know about these. But you should be very, very, very confident with your skills with the things you have checked off. Our objective again was to find the perimeter or circumference of a basic shapes, to find the area of basic shapes. So we should go to our checkoff and you guys should be getting it done. This is our scale. Remember, this is our last one. So find the distance between two points. We did that. We did it with a line. We did it in the plane. Missing angle measures. We did angle addition postulate, linear pair postulate, angle bisector. So we're done with that. Find the coordinate of the midpoint of a line segment on a number line and in the coordinate plane. We have done both of those. Use the distance formula. We have totally done that. Find the perimeter circumference of a geometric figure. We've done that. Find the area of a geometric figure. We've done that. And those are basic geometric figures. Now this construction, we won't have it on the test. Construct an angle bisector. We won't have that on the test. Use tools, technology to make uh, and test conjectures. We won't have that. Create an isometric drawing. We are completely skipping that. Create an ortho orthographic drawing, 3D, and identify opposite rays. Oh, we've totally done that. Now, the ones I checked, we're going to be doing uh, next week, we're going to be doing a construction um, thing just to make sure you know how to use those tools. Now let's check out these other basic things. Um, compass, that's going to be a construction, straight edge construction, constructions, and conjecture, that's an educated guess. Okay, um, we've got that. The net we will talk about in chapter six. Isometric drawing, we're not going to do. Orthographic drawing, we're not going to do. Now let's get after these other ones. I've got a point. I've got a line, I've got a plane, I've got infinite, I've got collinear, coplanar points, space, we've talked about geometric figure, a segment, a ray, opposite rays, postulate, intersection, terms, definitions, theorems, vertex, midpoint, ruler postulate, congruent, interior, exterior, that's of angles, segment bisector, angles, adjacent angles, acute, right, obtuse, straight, Vertical, complementary, supplementary, linear pair, angle bisector, distance formula, perimeter, area, circumference, and we've talked about pi. Being able to do these other things, constructing a segment, that's going to be done next week. Copy a segment, construct an angle, copy an angle, draw a net, we're not going to worry about that. Seg name segments raised, we've done that, 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 planes, points, and lines. Use the congruent symbol when appropriate, we've done that. Classify angles by their measures, we've done that, and identify angle pairs, we've done that. So, if there's anything that we've checked off that you're not sure of, you better talk to the geo peeps. Hey, have a great day.